Hey, what up, boys? Ah, how convenient that Steven would revamp the map for me so I can quite literally remake an old video one for one. We can't have outdated information on the channel now, can we? So give me a moment to rewatch that old video and copy its script exactly for double the ad revenue. <laughs> Wow, doesn't YouTube work in fascinating ways? Today's video is pure, unadulterated, unfiltered, baseless clickbait speculation, and now that I've told you that, you can no longer complain about it. Oh, who am I kidding? I don't even think the clickbait complainers even make it this far into the video. So let's assume the rest of you are ready to snort the good stuff. But before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to... Grab yourself a Coop a cola because, contrary to popular belief, it has been forever since I've made a video out of thin air. Believe it or not, every single video this month has had at least some form of evidence to back up my baseless claims, but today we need no such evidence, for I am a god, and creating something out of nothing is a power bestowed upon me. So, bow to me, minions. You will worship my baseless speculation and take it as gospel. You feel compelled to pledge to this project. Yes, our mighty intrepid lords, they will save us. Indeed, spread the word of our lord, minions. Give me your strength. We will bring this project to light. All hail our lords. We offer our underwear to him. Please take our garments as tribute. Yes, very good, my minions. Stephen Shriek is pleased. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? So, I think we'll start by touching on the previous video's topic to set expectations for today's rather lazy and shallow attempt at re-speculation. Recently, during an interview with MMORPG.com, Steven actually revealed, for the first time officially, the size of the Alpha 2 map. Just over half, or 220 kilometers squared, and this measurement just about lines up with my speculation today, give or take a few kilometers or so. But does this remain true? When Stephen talked about this, our perception was still using the original map concept from 2018. With that now tripled in size to accommodate actual gameplay implications, is this statement from Stephen back in January still a solid fact? Well, my opinion on this matter has changed somewhat. For the better? Maybe from a mental health perspective, but it may not be the perspective you guys like the answer of. However, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. I must blue boy you a little longer or the mighty algorithm will be unpleased. Before we continue though, I think it's worth mentioning the bulk of this map size increase is to accommodate the ocean, emphasize the scale of the world, the economic implications for caravans, and of course plenty of interesting content that we will again use as evidence to back up my claims later in the video. Now, with that said, I think it's time to set up the premise for today's speculation because we will be touching on everyone's favorite vaporware today, the cosmetic packs. I've mentioned many many times in the past, but people still continue to ignore literal facts about what these cosmetic packs actually are. These are not cosmetics. Everything we see being offered in these packs are in-game mobs and assets used to create Ashes of Creation. Without these, there would be no game, not only from a funding point of view, but also from an assets point of view. At the end of the day, Intrepid are making these assets anyway, they're just using them to help fund the game in the process. But I digress. I could ramble on about the positives and negatives of their cosmetic packs for hours, and I have done so on this channel many a video. Ultimately, what it comes down to is, without this additional funding pushing the game through its alpha development, aka the testing period they're not actually charging a monthly sub fee for, Ashes of Creation will not see the light of day. Steven may be committed to funding the game himself, claiming it is already funded, but that's obviously hyperbole. Without our support, that dedication to self-funding will come at a price. A price that likely caused the rest of our MMORPGs to fall to greed through convenience and pay-to-win based monetization. Giant corporate publishers. 
And we don't want that now, do we? Intrepid are adamant they want to self-publish and have assured us pay to win or convenience will not spoil this game's progression. And if I'm being realistic, I am willing to compromise a bit of visual progression to attain this. I may not be happy about it as I think visual progression is important, but I am just one nerd after all. I fear in today's age, my cosmetic opinion is no longer monetizable despite evidence suggesting otherwise. So let's take a look at these cosmetic packs for the positives that they provide to us. That sweet, sweet copium to convince us Alpha 2 isn't going to be complete ass on launch and isn't still 12 months away. I will begin this segment by asking you a question, my dear viewer. A question that plagues me every time I lay in bed at night. Why would Intrepid be picking and choosing specific cosmetic packs to work on instead of just going down the list in order? Why do we see assets shown from the 2020 April pack, this one here for example, but then they skip three months worth of assets and begin working on the 2020 October pack instead? That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. Logic would dictate if the context of these packs didn't really have any significant immediate meaning, the team could simply just work on things down the list in order to give us as consumers actually buying these packs a clear understanding of when we'll see our particular pack being shown. However, this is not the case you see. Intrepid pick assets out almost at random to show us and there's no rhyme or rhythm to their process at all. One month they're showing off a cute naked little mushroom butt but then the next month they're showing us a Firefox. This has plagued me since the beginning of this project roughly 24 months ago and I thought maybe Alpha 1 would shine some light on this. However, almost none of the pack assets they showed prior to Alpha 1 were actually used as ambient mobs or creatures bar a few obvious standout ones like the Swamp Beast or standard leather plate and light armor sets. But then boom, it hit me. After I was discussing some interesting critiques of Ashes of Creation's development process with my boys in the Discord, Something clicked. Something related to Alpha 2. And the thing that really triggered me was this set here. The September 2021 pack. A crowd favourite apparently, and rightly so, as it is very distinct and unique. But the aesthetic, the jade weapon, and the feel of the building in particular line up very closely with the orc aesthetic they showed a couple of months ago. You know, a very Asian looking shredder kind of vibe. Their lore is closely tied to very eastern vibes like honor, power and tranquility and Steven also teased that they have some close heritage with dragons as well. Yeah, I like the uh, I like the influence almost what appears to be somewhat scaly on the arms and the back and the skin a little bit. I mean, it looks like, you know, he may have some type of influences of Dragonborn in his lineage or something. Which brings us on to the main point of the video. Whew, what are we? Already eight minutes in? I've not even started talking about anything in particular. Gotta be a record, right? No, what am I saying? This has been the channel ever since Alpha 1 ended over a year ago. So, if we compare the old map with the new one, we can see a few locations that remain unnamed. We can use the placeholder names from the old map and export them over to the new one, giving us a complete list of all locations. But why? Why are we missing certain names on this map? Is it possible that these locations aren't finished yet? And if so, why is there such an odd distribution? We have the Badlands, Sand Squall Desert, and Riverlands that were recently shown off, and I have no doubt the June Dark is next on the roster of locations to show. But what about the rest? What about the Frostgrave Fells? Why is this one highlighted? Could this be the icy biome that we saw during the UE5 showcase? Or is it this mountain down here in the corner just in the winter season? It intrigues me, I will admit. We've also got the Dunzenkel Mountains up here. Could that UE5 showcase have been these mountains? Indicated by the dwarven ruins that Stephen did reveal to us. Biomes like the Tropics, the Magical Forest, and Tiger were technically shown in Alpha 1, so logic would dictate they are already well under development for Alpha 2. Or are they? Well, some brain dead moron from the Discord brought up that what we'll get for the launch of Alpha 2 is just this corner segment here, and from what we've seen so far, I cannot deny that. It very much looks like this is the case. But then, what about all the other assets they've shown us over the last two years of development? What about the mushroom mobs, the swamp beasts, the crocodiles, the ice elementals, the firefox? None of these assets fit comfortably within these four main biomes, and if these 
these assets were created so long ago and are not being utilized for Alpha 2, then what are they being utilized for? You know, Alpha 2 is going to have a pretty significant cross-section of different biomes. Um, the two primary ones that Alpha 2 is going to contain are going to be forests, riverlands, and desert, right? There'll be some badlands mixed in. There's going to be some some other areas, but that's going to be the predominant cross section of the world. If this statement from Stephen is taken literally, then we may be getting just this highlighted segment for the launch of Alpha 2. But is this the right decision for the game? Does this benefit Ashes of Creation's long term development by capturing as many people as possible by launching Alpha 2 in a state that blows all other MMORPGs? out of the water. Well, uh, I don't think so. And allow me to explain why, using some evidence that proves uh, Alpha 2 may be much larger than we expect it to be. Oh, we're deep in the trenches of copium now, my friends. I genuinely do not even know what is real or not at this point, so please take this speculation with a pinch of salt. I accidentally overdosed and Steven has stopped responding to my DMs. In fact, I think he's blocked me because I kept sending him pics of me posing in my underwear. I believe everything said post Unreal Engine 5 is truth. I think this new map size and all the content in the world was planned out and solidified between the six months of Alpha 1 being shut down and Unreal Engine 5 being announced. That interview Steven had with MMORPG.com was their plan set in stone, and that's why Steven went out to publicly talk about it. That means his claim that the launch of Alpha 2 will be half the map is a fact. And as I say these words, Steven is no doubt sweating a little bit and laughing nervously, but I don't care. You could of course take it either way, because he did say 220 kilometers squared, which if we line that up with the 1,200 kilometers squared world map, it makes more sense that he is just talking about this segment here, but we'll ignore that because we're trying to project good vibes whilst we sniff the copium. But what does this mean for Alpha 2? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I think the ocean is going to be a core part of Alpha 2's gameplay. If we want a genuine, playable version of Ashes of Creation, I think ships and the ocean gameplay needs to be a major part of it, meaning we need to utilize both continents for caravan gameplay and the open PvP ocean in between as well. If this whole segment here, which I'm highlighting, is the planned playable space for the launch of Alpha 2, then almost everything lines up with the cosmetic assets they they've shown over the years, including some interesting ocean-related content as well. For example, the Negolith. Our giant fishy friend was shown off many, many months ago alongside a common ocean-dwelling mob present in the oceans of Arcage, the Jellyfish. Why would they bother having these both finished if the ocean wasn't a planned piece of content to test? Quite the mystery, and there are arguments for both sides. So, I will end today's video with a question for you, my dear viewer. Do you think we'll get half the world as Stephen claims, meaning a segment from both continents and a slice of ocean in between, or will we be getting just this segment here, which lines up with the 220 km squared Stephen claims instead? I feel like this question can be broken down into something much simpler. Do you want to wait a long time, but have the Alpha 2 be phenomenal on launch? Or do you want the Alpha 2 to come as soon as possible and it be somewhat mediocre? I'll let you guys decide, but for me, even though my well-being quite literally depends on Alpha 2 arriving soon, I'd rather wait another three goddamn years and have a phenomenal Alpha 2 launch, rather than having the Alpha 2 arrive this year and it being a disappointing flop. Or hey, maybe we'll get an interesting compromise and it will end up coming mid to early next year. March 2023, anyone? But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And my opinions mean nothing without your like on this video. And hey, patrons, I know I said I'd have early access ready by now, but um, I don't. And it's probably not going to be ready until next month. So deal with it, I guess. What nark, you bald loser, paying to target on your head because you're dumb as hell? Alpha 2 is never coming. Get a grip, kiddo.
And to that I say, listen kid, I know you're salty that Pantheon ended up showing off 1999 assets and tech again this month, and that's okay. If you think their alpha is coming any time this year, then maybe refresh your propane tanks because you're high on copium. Uh, here, I'll show you the clip. <laughs> Fuck!